All of today's action covered for you. Larry Shelver is in the pits of the CME. David Hefty is somebody who's going to tell us why it's time to ditch some of those popular dividend payers many of you have been investing in. And Spencer Patton breaks down the one commodity that he believes is set for a pullback. But let's start with Larry Shelver. You know, Larry, you could say not a lot of heavy conviction in this, this rally today, but I don't really care. I don't know if David does. Look, a, a win is a win, isn't it? It is a win. I mean, I think people are just resigned to the fact that the market is just going to ratchet higher because the, the central banks are flooding the world with liquidity. I do need to say, though, that today we did see some conviction in builders, banks, and material stocks. So that's one thing we haven't seen in quite a while. Other than that, you're right. It's been a very lackluster market. The pain trade does seem to be up uh, to the higher point right now. Larry, while one would expect commodities to go up as, as the dollar value goes down because of all the money printing, we have seen this tremendous drop in oil. I know a lot of it has to do with inventory, but I'm wondering if the inventory problem and the overall problem with oil is the fact that people are wondering whether China is really going to slow down as much as FedEx and other people say it is. You know, that is part of the story. I think another thing people aren't, aren't hearing is that North Sea Oil, the maintenance part of that project, is almost complete. And so that's helped with the inventory levels. Also, refinery uh, production has been up by about 4%. And beyond all that, let's keep in mind that we had a classic case of demand destruction, people just using less gasoline. Let's not blame it on high-frequency trading right now, but classic demand destruction. And we see a healthy reprieve in the price of oil right now. Okay, we know that Adobe numbers are out, and as we're parsing through them, we should mention, if we can throw up how the stock is doing, it's getting hit, at least on the first blush of these numbers, so you can get a sense of what's happening with this stock. It is falling, um, and as we look at sort of what's going on here and we're waiting just for our experts to be looking through these numbers we don't want to get all of the details out because sometimes it's very specific you do have a lot of companies getting ready to report how do you expect larry that we are going to see earnings season come through i i think at some point earnings are going to be a lot worse than they were last quarter only because we can't continue to have the high price that's being paid for the earnings that we're seeing and that is cheap wage compensation. As I've said before, wage compensation on an inflation-adjusted basis is at a World War II low. It just can't continue to sustain itself. Also, we have economic numbers outside of housing drifting lower and lower and lower, so we just cannot continue to sustain this pace. By the way, let's if we, if we can put Adobe back up on the screen again, because the shares are going down. You know, we've been looking at all of the benefits of Apple. The company itself, of course, doing great guns. The stock doing great. A lot of other companies that supply Apple doing great. But Adobe is in the unfortunate position of competing with Apple. They're also competing with Microsoft. So is it, is it possibly looking at some, time, some point here where the success of Apple begins to crowd out some competitors like Adobe? Yeah, I think that's absolutely the case. And let's keep in mind, as long as people are, are, are willing to wait overnight in line for Apple products, that's going to hurt a company like Adobe. I mean, it's just simple math. And so, yeah, I think it's going to... Uh, Apple's at the top of the perch right now. Everything else is just way, way below it, and I wouldn't get involved right now. Okay, let's, let's get some more specifics on Adobe with Robert Gray, who's been looking at the numbers. Go ahead, Robert. All right, David, thanks so much. And, you know, you guys uh, were talking about the headline numbers uh, for their fiscal third quarter in line on the earnings number, but the revenue numbers, continuing a trend we saw in the last reporting season, $1.08 billion, slightly light. But forget that. Throw that out. Investors looking ahead to the current quarter, shortfalls on both the top and bottom lines. That's why the stock is dropping. They see $1.08 to $1.13 billion in revenue. The Estimate there is for 1.21 billion. Look at the bottom line; they're seeing 53 to 58 cents per share in their uh, in the quarter here. And we're going to continue to dig into this. But again, they are looking at uh, uh, missing out on the numbers here for the current quarter. So we're seeing it again. This range: 53 to 58 cents per share on a non-GAAP basis. The estimate there: 67 cents. So again, now you're seeing why the shares are dropping in after hours. Gang, uh, listen. Let's let's keep in mind these numbers could moderate. They already have. I mean, we first saw a $30 print there, and then 31. Now it's 32. But this is the long arm of Steve Jobs. He did not. 
pick Adobe Flash to be the winner in the iPad. He went with something called HTML5. And this could very well be, at least in part, a reflection of them being shut out of the iPad business. Now, they've tried to do an HTML, uh, HTML5 business as well. But the fact is that uh, this is a company that needs to transition somehow, and we'll be watching well, this very closely. They, and they have been trying in the education market. They've been trying to get into that. By the way, we, we began to see some signs of problem with their back-to-school specials uh, starting about three or four weeks ago. They had much steeper discounts than they usually have. A lot of people suggesting that that's because they simply weren't selling as they were in Larry. This, this brings to mind the question of whether this general slowdown we've been seeing in the economy itself, again, not necessarily reflected in the stock market, which has been growing great guns, will eventually hit the stock market in terms of lower earnings. You know, I think it will, and let's keep in mind, tomorrow we have the world's PMIs coming out. That has a lot to do with everything beyond what the central banks are doing. It's not exactly where the number is, but where the numbers are going. And it, it, to me, it's clear that we're contracting. So at some point, I do believe we're just going to fall off the cliff, realizing that we are not growing right now. Got it. All right. Good to see you. Thank you so much, Larry Shover. And we're going to go back to him when the S&P futures pits close. All right.